Before implementing the application, we at first need to understand what is Firebase Realtime DB and Firebase Firestore. What is the difference between the two? Because these are the two databases that Firebase provides us currently. Firebase Realtime Database is Firebase original NoSQL cloud-based database. At a very later stage, Firebase Firestore was introduced. So Realtime Database allows us to store and sync data in real time across all clients connected to it. Whereas Firebase Firestore is a NoSQL database or kind of a NoSQL database that was designed to overcome some of the limitations of the real time database. Firebase also offers a more modern, flexible data structure and supports advanced queries. And we're going to see some of the key features. Now we're going to see some of the key differences between the two. So the first difference is the data model. Real-time database uses a single JSON tree to store data, making it more like a hierarchy key value store. Whereas the Firestore uses a document-based model and stores data as collection and documents similar to a file system hierarchy. Each document can contain nested data which provides flexibility for more complex data models. So this is how the data is structured in both the databases. Now the second difference is related to the query support. In real-time database, we can work with the simple queries based on the tree structure that it is providing us. But in Firebase Firestore, we get more advanced queries compared to the real-time database, including the range, compound, and array queries that can be executed to perform complex operations. The next one is related to the performance. Real-time database works well for small to medium data sets. Whereas Firebase Firestore is designed for larger, more complex data sets. And you will come to know why I'm saying that from the coming points. Now comes the scaling part. So real-time database supports vertical scaling because it is applicable only on a single reason. But Firebase Firestore supports horizontal scaling as you can go for multiple reason support. As of now, this is a scenario. If they change it later on, then we will see about it. Now the next comes the real-time syncing. So both the databases provide real-time syncing of data across all connected clients. But in Firebase Firestore, you get a better control. It means that you can enable and disable as needed. Even you can switch on and switch off in real-time database also. But yes, uh, the things that are given in Firestore is much more efficient compared to the real-time database in this scenario also. Now comes the next part, which is the security part. Well, security rules. Well, these are given for both real-time database and Firestore. But in real-time database, security rules are database-wide. Whereas in Firestore, they are more granular down to document level. So you can just execute the document stuff to provide rules and execute some of the things like role-based authentication and whatever you want to do, you can execute at the document level itself. You can fetch the values out of the JSON data and work on it on a single field or something like that. These things I have already covered up in my INE course. So you can check out the links if you want to know about it. For the time being, these are the key features or the key differences between the two which you need to understand. Apart from that, we also have some more use case examples that I'm going to show you with the help of which you can understand which database to choose when because both databases have their own pros and cons. But based on your application need, you can select those. For the time being, if you want to create a chat application with the help of real-time database, you can create a simple chat application with real-time messaging. But with Firebase Firestore, you can create a large-scale messaging platform supporting multi-user threads, which means that for simple applications, real-time database can work pretty smoothly, but for larger applications, definitely, which I have already shown, you can go for Firestore. So in our case, currently, we are going to build a simple application, simple chat application, which is good with real-time database also, and you can execute the same with Firestore too. The next example comes of the social media application. For social media application, if you want to work with these databases, then with real-time database, you can work with the comment section for smaller user bases. But in Firestore, you get an opportunity to work with full-scale social networking platforms with complex data models. But you need to take care of the pricing part because the pricing in both the cases is different depending on the functionality that you are using and depending on how many operations, read and write operations that you're performing. So in Firestore, it can be quite high in some cases. So make sure you understand each and everything properly before working with these databases. 
Now the next thing is the real time gaming. If you want to build some gaming application and want to integrate your Firebase databases, then you can go for it. You can perform multiplayer games with real time data syncing and updations with real time database and do this complex state management and offline support with Firestore. Also, both the platforms support offline capabilities and many more features are there. Now, the next example I can show off is of the IoT devices. If you're working with any IoT devices, then at the time you can go for real time control and monitoring of IoT devices with the help of real time database. And for Firestore, you can go for large scale IoT systems with advanced queries and offline syncing. So these features you get for this particular examples. Now, along with that, I would like to mention about the pricing model also that real time database is charged by data users. That means GB stored and GB downloaded. But in Firebase Firestore, the amount is charged based on the operations. That means how many reads, writes and delete you have used also along with the storage that you have worked with. So the amount of storage that you use based on that also the amount will be calculated along with the read write operations that you perform along with the deletion too. So now you have got a clear idea when to use Word. We are good to start off with our chat application. So let's get started.